So what we have right now is we're going to upgrade the motherboard RAM and the CPU of my brother's computer. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to replace his motherboard with the AMD Tomahawk with the built-in Wi-Fi. This is the X670E and also we're going with the DDR5 Trident Z5. Um, this is I think the CL30, yep, uh, we're going for the 64 gig in the AMD Ryzen 7000 series. This will be our processor. And uh, let's do this. So before the teardown, we want to prepare all our tools screwdrivers and everything remove it properly and put aside very important guys put aside all the screws together and we're good to go removing the video card right now this massive video card is a supreme video card um, put a little bit of you know cleaning up take care of it and I told my brother protect it with your life look at this I'm just gently rubbing it removing it from dust a little bit of vacuum there and we're good to go so we're gonna remove the CPU right now and gently remove that bracket and we're good to go look at that messy thermal paste but it serves its purpose at this point it's critical regardless of your experience newcomers new builders DIYers my general rule is always take a picture always get a backup of the wirings um, regardless of how familiar you are it takes only 10 seconds stand up there get a great awesome shot because it will save your later especially for the motherboard although they're under the same manufacturer there's always different routing of the cables inside so take a picture that's my general advice so after taking a picture we are ready to take out the motherboard but first i'd like to always check out the motherboard itself the new one remove it i'd like to see where the proper screws were placed and that's just a habit that i did and picked up 15 years ago i know 15 years ago Ankh, you've been doing that for a long time but it's a good practice that you compare your motherboard that you want to upgrade and the current one just to make sure that they got the correct size it fits on the PC case and most importantly they have the same screw location on the old motherboard check also included softwares or hardware in your motherboard very critical instruction manual is a must if you're not familiar it's a good refresher that way you are well aware of what you're dealing with very important at this point we are ready to remove it um on this one guys the old motherboard doesn't have the bracket of the cpu of the newer motherboard so what we did is we removed the bracket because this is just a regular cpu cooler and it didn't came with any cpu by the way now we're removing the screws the mounts for our water cooler on our old motherboard it's very easy because it's hand tight a little bit of screw in there but it's critical that you know and pause a little bit that way you don't lose your mind of finding where the bracket went so be aware of what your current cpu cooler to adapt in your new motherboard at this point we're removing the wires like what I said, the picture that we took is very critical at this point since we can see what part of the motherboard it was hooked up. We're moving the main CPU power and we're about to be ready to take this out. At this point, we have put in our motherboard, tightening it up with the screws. First, gently just to sit everything else and we got the CPU now, guys. We are using our Corsair XT M50 to cool down our CPU. Look at that bad boy. 
Now, it's very important that you align the arrows from the CPU to the motherboard on the top left corner. It must be aligned. Now you can close it and there's a tension in this one, guys. CPU generates a lot of heat, so it needs to be secured properly with this tensioner right there. Other than that, we are putting the thermal paste and installing the cooler. And a quick check of any loose connection. And it looks like we are set at this part. Little cleaning, vacuuming of the vents and the fan. It's really not bad at all. We are going to install our RAM. Make sure you put it in the correct spot. When you push down the RAM, you hear that click. That way you know it's installed properly. Final roundup check, any loose connection, and putting back our massive video card. Make sure you remove the sticker in it and gently put it in. There's a click as well, just to make sure that it is properly hooked up. Putting now the power supply for our GPU. And finally, securing it with the three bolts mounted in the PC case. We're gonna head to the studio now and see if it will fire up. It looks like we are good to go at this point. We are going to check out 48 megahertz for the RAM. We're gonna unlock it. Now you can see it's 6,000 megahertz. Awesome. I'd like to clarify something. Um, we have an SSD that I didn't took a video of for some reason. My main camera here ran out of battery and it recorded it, but it took it out. So it's corrupted file. But to clear up some questions, you can use your old SDD or SSD that has the windows in it. And exactly that's what we did in this one. You do not need to purchase any new windows license and load it up and re-image it totally you do not have to do that it will work right off the bat especially on the same manufacturer motherboard however however the configuration and that windows especially for the drivers of the cpu motherboard and everything that comes with it is from the old setup basically the profile that you had in that old computer is carried on to this new computer. It will boot up, but it is terribly slow. So when you shut down the device, you press the computer power button, interface sends a signal to the CPU. CPU will fire it to the RAM, waking it up. As soon as it does that, that's where the problem lies. It's very, very slow and uh, it'll come up eventually. It's trying to learn something. It's what they call relearning. The DDR5 was relearning the computer and everything that is newly installed. We came from DDR4. Regardless of what you do in that point, there's a lot of workarounds. Some people said that removing the SSD and putting it back again into the motherboard fixed their problem. It could be true, but as a PC tech, it's kind of hard to justify that route. So what we did here is we're going to BIOS update and we'll see what happens. For the BIOS update, make sure you went to the manufacturer website and get the most latest one, not the beta version, but the most recent release. Save it in your download files, put it into a USB drive and drag and drop. Now, you have to restart the PC itself so that you can select our USB. Delete on this one. Going to the BIOS, we're checking the current version. Make sure that it's the old version. After confirming, we're heading to the M flash and we're gonna confirm yes. It's going to restart one more time. After the restart is going to boot up to the USB, you pick the one that we just drag and drop a while ago on that BIOS and click enter. We are going to that state, confirm yes, and we're BIOS updating. 
Now, after some time, leave it nicely there. Don't let it disturb by anyone. <laughs> but other than that, this is the first boot of it, guys, after that very slow boot. And I can tell the difference now because on the past profile setup, it'll take at least three to five minutes to boot up. On this one, on the first boot, it took like around 30 seconds to wake up. But eventually, after all the updates that we did on this one, it took like less than 15 seconds and it's firing back up. But I think it fixed the issue of having that BIOS very, very slow booting when coming back from off mode. As soon as we had a BIOS update, all the motherboard with this new stuff that they put in, in there, like AI configurations, it learns what type of user you are. If you're a content creator, it has a profile for that. If you're a gamer, it has a profile for that. Streamers and everything, it is amazing. Install all the necessary updates, especially in the motherboard um, windows, if you want that one. Uh, this specific build, my brother prefers to stay in Windows 10 environment since it's stable for his gameplay, his type of playing. Um, he is going to upgrade later on in Windows 11, but I'm using Windows 11 in my laptop. It's breeze for me on what I play. It is stable enough, but for him, it is available. He just opted to stay on Windows 10. But overall, BIOS update, it fixed all of that slow boot time. And definitely, I am very impressed with this build, with this upgrade. And I must say, this is OP overpowered for all the games and i'm gonna say video editing but it's a beautiful machine man other than that i hope you guys was able to pick up something always remember god is good all the time this is your main boy peace out mm -hmm.